Hi guys, good day to you. Uh, my name is Theo and today we're going to talk a little more about distillation columns and we're going to talk about trays. Now I assume if you're watching this video, you should already know a little about the McCabe Thiel method. If you're not sure, please go check out some videos on it. And you already know a little about uh, distillation column theory, which means uh, you should know how to, at least in theory, separate a binary mixture. Of course, if you know multi-component distillation, that's all the more better. Now, today we will be learning about trays, as I have said before. Trays. And we want to introduce to you some of the trays that are found in distillation columns and how they work. Now, these trays will include bubble cap trays. Uh, they will also include a sieve tray and of course you will have dual flow trays and of course some of these variants even involve valve trays now if these names confuse you, don't worry We'll get to them in a little bit. Now, assuming you do know about distillation columns, you should know that, let's say you have a column, and you have some feed going in. Now, at least you should be having um, some of the distillate going the top, and some of the bottoms going to the bottom of the tower. This still it will be condensed, some of the times partially, some of the times completely, and some of it will be refluxed. The bottoms will be going through the reboiler as usual. Some of it will be taken out as the bottoms, and some of it will be going as the going back as boil up, right? So this will be like a vapor. This will be a vapor flow which goes up the tower. And in the tower, you will have many, many trays, typically. Now, so what actually goes on in these trays? Right. So obviously, in a tray, let's say you have a tray, right? In a tray, you will have liquid uh, vapor going up and liquid going down. Now, how do we facilitate this movement? Okay, so... If you want some vapor to go up, you gotta cut some kind of like holes in these trays, right? So you can imagine these trays having some holes in them. And every tray will have some kind of holes for the vapor to go up. Now if the now if the vapor is going up most of the time through these holes, the liquid uh, will need to contact the vapor on each of these trays. So there, you can imagine on these trays there will be somewhat of a thin layer on this li uh, of liquid that is in contact with the vapor and preferably they will stay on each tray and not be falling down back because you don't, you don't want that to happen because the contact between the vapor and liquid will be very poor. In fact this is I believe uh, a phenomenon that is called weeping. But we won't go too, too much into that, too much into detail. But let's just uh, carry on talking about the tray operations. So in normal tray operations, the vapor will go up through each of these little holes. And it will flow down through this thing called a down comma. Alright. So, so you have this top tray here. Let's just call it tray 1. And this is tray 2. So there will be liquid going down this down comma into from tray 1 to tray 2. And yeah, so you have vapor again contacting the liquid at, uh, at tray 2. And the old flow will go down through another down comma into tray 3. So this is perhaps one of the simplest kinds of distillation uh, design. And this, the simplest kind, we call that the sieve tray. Okay, 
So the thief tray will have these down comers, all right? You have these down comers at the side to channel the liquid down, and they'll be just plates with some holes in them, a simple metal plate with some holes in them, and that's why it's called a sieve. So you can imagine from the top view, you have some evenly punched holes in this sieve tray. And at the side, let's just punch a bigger hole, and that will be sort of a downcomer. So there'll be a hole here. This is the top view, right? There'll be a hole, there'll be holes here, and there will be liquid flowing down this uh, darkened area. So if you look at the side view, again, there'll be something like this. The punched holes will be here, and the downcomer to guide the liquid down will be at the side, this darkened area. All right? So that is a sieve tray. So that's possibly one of the most common trays, very cheap to manufacture because the design is simple. And what can we actually do to improve the contact between the vapor and liquid flo uh, flowing in this uh, sieve trays, right? And yeah, so what can we do? Because usually the bubbles will just bubble through this uh, layer of liquid and they'll have some contact, but it's not the best. How can we improve it? We can do something. A we can do a little something. Now let's draw this uh, column again with the downcomer. Okay, so we have the sieve tray, the standard sieve tray, with the downcomer, and we have some holes punched into each of the trays here. Let's call this tray one and two, and again there'll be liquid going down, some liquid and going down here. Okay, so vapor will be passing through these holes in the sieve going up. Now how can we introduce or also call, uh, get more contact between the vapor and liquid? Well, one idea was to introduce bubble caps. So instead of the vapor going through the liquid in such a short distance, the, li the vapor will actually have to pass through a bubble cap. So imagine this is a normal sieve tray, and this is a bubble cap. Okay? So these bubble caps will be partially filled with liquid and vapor, because the vapor will be coming through here. So there'll be vapor flow right here. There'll be vapor flow up here as well. So this is the normal sieve tray, this is the bubble cap. So in the normal sieve, of course, it'll be flowing up like this going through this thin layer of liquid and for this the vapor will be flowing up here too however however the li the vapor and liquid mixture will have to be forced to move a longer distance through the liquid before reaching the surface in this sense uh, the contact between the vapor and liquid streams is a lot higher and the, the efficiency is a lot better and it is, this would be a lot closer to equilibrium. So in an ideal column, the vapor is always in equilibrium with the liquid but in reality, it's not always the case. So non-equilibrium. So the efficiency of the tray will depend on how close the real contact is to the ideal. Okay, so the more ideal, the more contact there is between the vapor and liquid, the more efficient. Okay, so you can imagine for a bubble cap, <coughs> for a bubble cap tray, it's a lot more efficient than an ideal tray, right? Uh, it's not more efficient than an ideal tray. The ideal tray is 100% efficient. The bubble cap tray is more efficient than the sieve tray. So that's that's a that's kind of it for the bubble cap tray. Oopsie, sorry. So that's a kind of it for the bubble cap trays. Now what about the dual flow trays? And why do we need a dual flow tray? Well, you can imagine. Let's say you have bubble caps here. 
for each of these trays you can imagine it's going to be pretty expensive because there'll be more pieces of fabricated metal or fabricated material that you have to shape in a very exact manner um, to kind of you know get that high efficiency so the manufacturing cost goes up so this will be more efficient but more expensive this is moderately efficient and a lot less expensive what if you want dirt cheap so for dirt cheap version dirt cheap if you want a dirt cheap tray dirt cheap tray how about this we take out the down comers there as a whole we just fill the whole column with you know the trays which are like sieves we take out the down comer all together and we have this kind of a column with no down comer and liquid is flowing down the holes and vapor is coming up the holes of course you can imagine the contact between the vapor and liquid is very poor and there'll be a probably you know some degree of remixing or something like that but overall overall low efficiency so one tray is not one theoretical stage maybe you need a few to make one theoretical stage so you have a very low efficiency situation but it's dirt cheap oh yeah I already wrote that so yeah it is dirt cheap now this is known as a dual flow tray this is a dual flow tray so the vapor and liquid is going up and down through the same hole so the vapor is going up the liquid is flowing down through this hole over here these holes so dual flow tray is superbly superbly cheap so these are the three main kinds of trays the dual flow the sieve tray oh sorry the dual flow the sieve tray and the bubble cap tray okay so what what is this valve tray about well, it turns out let's say you have a sieve tray which is, you know, the standard run-of-the-mill kind of tray the very basic kind and ideally you don't want liquid going down through these holes alright? you don't want liquid to flow down through these holes you only want to go you only want to ensure the liquid goes down through this down comma so that the efficiency is maximized right so what do you want to do to prevent this okay so instead of uh, installing bubble caps the thing you can install at each of these holes is a valve so the valve kind of you know let's zoom in on this I didn't draw that properly let's zoom in over here so this is a hole pardon me so this is a hole you can imagine, you know, you put a flat on here with some kind of hinge. That's a very simple kind of valve. I don't I don't know if real valves don't think real valves are actually, you know, designed so simplistically. Well, they could be, but you know, it depends on the cost and efficiency of it. But the idea is just like that. You have a valve here, made up of some kind of metal flap or a flap made of some kind of durable material. Then you have some kind of a hinge here. So, if the liquid kind of uh, wants to flow down, the hinge closes. So this is kind of a door. So when the when the liquid wants to flow down, it forces the door to close. But when the vapor wants to flow up, so this is liquid, yeah. When the vapor wants to flow up, the door opens. So the door opens when the vapor wants to go up, and the door closes when the liquid wants to flow down. That's basically what a valve does. So, yeah, let me do that again. So you have a door, and if liquid wants to flow down, it forces the door shut. If vapor wants to go up, the door opens. So that is pretty much a valve tray. Now I suspect it is more, yeah, it should be more efficient than a sieve tray. All right, because uh, you don't, when liquid flows down, the holes, the contact between the vapor and liquid is not as good. 
And to improve the efficiency, you want to prevent this. So you do that by installing a valve, which is, I think, cheaper than a bubble cap. And that would make it a whole lot cheaper. I mean, it will be cheaper than a bubble cap, but the efficiency is higher than the tray. Uh, higher than the sieve tray, right? So if we were to rank the efficiencies, so you have a bubble cap tray, it's more than a valve tray, it's more than a sieve tray, and that is more than a dual flow tray. Okay, so this is the end of my introduction to you know, tray design and distillation columns. You can find out more about it by you know reading books or you know looking in the description where I can I'll be posting uh, other links. I'll be posting other links for you to you know take a look at what these uh, tray designs are about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again. See you guys next time. Bye.